Hello and welcome to yet another Blu-ray box set unboxing and review. Uh, again, this is a used box set, so it's not going to necessarily be a proper unboxing. It is, again, more so a review of the overall package. As you can see, the outside uh, packaging for the featured set, being the Critters Collection, not necessarily the greatest artwork. I mean, what, what are they honestly going to do with a bunch of Critters? Uh... They did what they could. The fellows at Scream Factory do give you a pretty solid, uh, thick cardboard case to hold the films in. And a brief uh, overall on the film's plots and special features and runtimes and all that. Some legal information on the bottom. So there we can see the outside packaging. Now let's go ahead and get into each individual film. Uh, this does include four Critters films. It does not include Critters Attack as that film was released after this box set came out. Uh, here we have Critters 1 uh, on the back. We get a new 2K scan of the film, a pretty in-depth making of uh, and kind of retrospective documentary. It's about an hour and ten minutes. It uh, really, really kind of impressed me. I didn't watch the entire thing. I only started it and watched maybe 35 minutes of it, but I am going to go back in and watch all of them because I am interested in how these films uh, came about. There's also a tribute to the screenwriter, Dominic Muir. Uh, it's about 20 minutes, and it's more just kind of archival footage and you know, a memorial. So uh, you have that. You get an alternate ending and some theatrical trailers and TV spots and such. That's kind of uh, standard for all of these. Uh, I did, so far, I have watched Critters 1 and 2, and I can say, well... The films themselves were never necessarily the best looking. The prints on the Blu-ray are pretty good, and the audio is uh, pretty good and loud, pretty clear. Again, not the greatest, but the films weren't overall themselves to begin with. Uh, here we have the disc image is the same as the default cover image, but as usual with a Scream release, every individual one has a reversible sleeve, so you can choose to set them as you wish. I've kept one and two as they came. Here we have two on the back. Uh, they, they all get new 2K scans, I believe, so I'm not going to uh, say that every time. The making of on this one was a bit shorter. It clocked in a, just a little over an hour, and uh, that's, that's about it. There's a theatrical trailer and a TV spot, and uh, I forgot to mention there's also some commentaries on each of them. For some reason, they don't list them in the special features, but they are on there. Uh, I'm not sure how many are on each disc. I did only check the first disc, but I'm assuming they probably have more. But yeah, that is it for the special features on Critters 2. Now for the reversible sleeve. The disc image, the same as the default image on the cover there. We have the reverse sleeve, the giant critter ball rolling at you. All of the, uh, the back... The back stuff on the reversible sleeves is always identical, so I'm not going to be showing those off either. Just the reversible fronts. Here we have Critters 3, the film debut of one Leonardo DiCaprio. Of course, everyone uh, everyone loves that, except for Leonardo DiCaprio himself. Uh, this is actually my personal favorite of the Critters films, but it has been probably close to 10 years since I have revisited it, so I'm excited to jump into this film next. I just finished watching the... Uh, I guess there isn't a 2K scan on this one, but I just finished watching the documentary on this one, and uh, disappointingly, it's only about 26 minutes. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, Leonardo DiCaprio wants nothing to do with this film. They do they do talk about that a bit, and they do seem pretty bummed out themselves that he's uh, pretty much erased this from his filmography as best he could. But uh, what are you going to do? You do get the Kyoto Brothers talking about their brilliant puppet creations, and everyone talks about how great they are. But uh, as for special features, that's about it. You get a trailer and a still gallery. I don't know if there is a commentary on this because the director herself was not involved in the documentary. So I don't know if maybe they got the screenwriter, David J. Scout, to do one or what. The uh, disc image, the same as the cover. I have not reversed this one. And there we have the reverse image there. I think you can kind of see why I haven't reversed it yet. And now moving along to Critters 4, when they ran out of ideas completely and they just went to space. Although I have to say, out of all the movies to just generically go to space, the Critters having already come from space, that gives it a little bit of uh, get a little bit of leeway. 
Uh, the documentary on this one I have not started, but I know it clocks in a little bit shorter than the previous one at about 20 minutes. Uh, and you get a trailer and a still gallery, possibly with a commentary. I cannot confirm that. I have not actually checked this disc out, but uh, let's go ahead and check out the reverse image. The reverse image, uh, disappointingly, it's the exact same as Critters 3. They just put a laser beam behind it. Even the, uh, the discs, as you can see, identical. Not too much creativity put into that there. Shame on you, New Line. But uh, there you have it. That is a uh, brief overview of the Critters Collection box set and the contents you get therein. Uh, I'm not really going to touch on the films themselves. Uh, while they're, they're not necessarily the greatest tiny terror film ever made, they're definitely better than uh, pretty much 97% of everything Charles Band has ever made.